After World War II had served its purpose, and Nazism had been used to serve the purpose of the Illuminati, those who had directed the war on the German side were ordered liquidated. But so that it would be made look legal and nice, we had the Nuremberg trials where they were legally murdered. Now anybody that served in a high-ranking position in your Navy, the Canadian Navy, or the British Navy, know that we have to obey orders. And those orders are given by the politicians, the civilians. Admiral Bacon, one of our British admirals, had the courage to write to Mr. Churchill in the First World War and said, Sir, fighting the enemy is a pleasure. Fighting your you politicians is the damnedest headache a man could inflict on himself. That was what Admiral Bacon, who was one of these gruff old fellows, and he didn't give a continental cuss for all the politicians this side of hated. And he wrote that to Mr. Churchill. Now, as a result of the Second World War, the United Nations was formed. Just one more step towards a one world government. Your government gave recognition to Soviet Russia and was quickly followed by Britain. If you remember, the Bolsheviks became so powerful due to the aid we had given them that we had to fight a war of containment in 1919, 1920, and 1921. The conditions under which we fought the Bolsheviks was exactly the same as the conditions your troops and ours fought in Korea this last war. We were never allowed to give them a darn good licking as soon as we had just pushed them back and got them into where they couldn't, where they were contained, then we had to stop. We weren't allowed to deliver the knockout. Good Lord, Bolshevism, or as we know it today, international communism could have been absolutely wiped out in Russia between 1919 and 1921. But that wasn't in accordance with Weishaupt's or Pike's plan. That plan said it had to be built up until it equaled in strength the whole of the United Christendom. Now, is there any person in this audience can deny that during World War II, international communism was not built up until it equaled in strength the whole of the United Christendom? What about Yal, Tehran, Boston? Stalin took all they offered and asked for more. And because it suited the purpose of those directing international intrigue at the top, he got all he asked for. And those that were working with him, the three big men, thought Stalin was playing along with. I think history will prove that Stalin went so far as to agree that FDR would be the first king despot. And when he double-crossed FDR after Yalta, that was the end of FDR. You want to ask some of your own intelligence officers if they'll open up. No, thank God I never took the oath. I've been working at Intelligence Works since way back in 1912. And on every occasion that I was brought into the Intelligence Department, I begged off taking the oath, and because there was no difference of opinion between my senior officers, Admiral S.S. Jones and these other admirals I've mentioned, they never required me to take the oath, and that's the only thing that let my tongue loose so I could speak. If you belong to intelligence, to the FBI, or the Royal Mountain in Mountain Police, you are not allowed to divulge. I never asked them for any information. Working with a small, tight-knit group, we gave them all the information that came into our hands. 
But I was so close to intelligence, that is the direct intelligence, that I had my own office in the intelligence department at Ottawa, and I had one sonographer delegated to do all my typing, and my wife and I are godfather and godmother to one officer who was director of naval intelligence for a period of five years, and another man who is our highest ranking intelligence officer, he and his wife are godfather and godmother to one might, so we've been pretty close to this then. I've had the pleasure of being the guest in the homes of nearly all these men I'm talking, and I've had the opportunity of discussing different things. They are not in the habit of volunteering information, but if you ask them a direct question, all you have to do is to look into their eyes. As I told the head commissioner of the Mountain Police when we were having a conference one day, he says, you know I can't talk. No, but I says, you're a darn poor poker player, because after I ask you a question, all I have to do is to look in your eyes and I can see the answer just glaring at me. 